Coping with the Changes Brought by Dementia. Why do I feel this way? This session is for people living with dementia or caring for someone living with dementia. Perhaps you're finding yourself reacting to things a little differently than you usually do. Maybe your energy is not quite there. You may feel that everything is heightened, or you may feel numb. Maybe you're feeling a myriad of unexpected emotions and not really understanding why. Today, we're going to explore some of the reasons you may be feeling the way you are and talk about some strategies to help yourself and those around you cope in the face of the changes brought by dementia and a pandemic. You cannot change the direction of the wind, but you can adjust your sails. Take a moment to think about this quote. Dementia is present in your life. You didn't ask for it, neither did your family members, but you are all affected by it in different ways. You may be feeling buffeted by those winds of change and a bit swamped by a mix of emotions. You may not be able to change the direction of the wind, but you can adjust your sails. Today we're going to talk about how you can make those adjustments, especially when the direction of the wind is constantly changing. The dementia journey is full of unknowns. From the moment symptoms start to become noticeable, those affected by dementia, both the person living with the disease and care partner, will become entangled in uncertainty. It often begins with the feeling that something is off prior to receiving a diagnosis. If you have received a diagnosis, you may be wondering, what now? What will the future look like for me, for us? The uncertainty continues as you navigate the changes in your social lives, your home, healthcare services, and the changes brought by dementia. Some of these changes will feel like loss, loss of lifestyle, job, or hobby, loss of a friend or a relationship. Not knowing when another loss will come can be draining. You may find yourself looking back on your old normal and wondering if you will ever feel a sense of normal again. You are living in a state of perpetual change. People living with dementia and caregivers have shared these quotes with us. I hope that reading and hearing these words help you to know that you are not alone in feeling whatever it is that you are feeling. Certainly I miss the abilities I am losing. I am reminded daily of the losses. It's a strange world I'm trapped in. On a bad day, even my solutions have problems. And a caregiver said that Alzheimer's caregivers ride the world's biggest, fastest, scariest emotional roller coaster every day. The changing winds along the dementia journey can mean that we experience a swirl of emotional states. These emotions can be experienced and re-experienced in any order. It's not a linear progression from one emotion to another, and there are no time limits to how long you spend in each emotional state. So let's put a name to some of these emotional states. A diagnosis of dementia can come as a shock and may also bring a feeling of numbness. Numbness means not feeling our emotions, often just pushing on to get everything done to stay busy and ignoring or pushing away our feelings. Others may experience a sense of relief in the wake of a diagnosis. <gasps> now I know why. Or you may find yourself thinking, this can't be happening to me. It's not as bad as the doctor says. In the beginning, 
Denial can be a positive, protective force. We use denial to shield ourselves from painful news while we adjust inwardly to a new reality. In fact, a degree of denial is essential. Like drinking hot coffee, we sip the truth of our condition carefully and gently. Many people feel angry and frustrated about the diagnosis. They may feel angry at themselves or at other people. Despondency and sadness recur throughout the journey and at the center of the swirl is acceptance. Acceptance does not mean you are happy about the situation, but that you are accepting the problem rather than avoiding it, and realizing you're ready to make changes. You are responding to the new reality. Acceptance is hard. It doesn't happen overnight, and it's not a permanent state. It's something that weaves in and out of our emotional life, along with other feelings. You may feel more accepting of a change and your new normal one day, or one moment, only be to be thrown back into sadness, denial, or anger the next. This is normal, and it's okay. People work through these emotions differently and at different rates. You may be experiencing shock while your partner is experiencing denial. Then you shift into acceptance as another family member dives into sadness. It can be tough when friends and family are in different places. So let's take a moment to understand how humans process change. One way of looking at this is the psychological state of change model, which says that there are three main stages in any transition, the ending, the neutral or transition zone, and the new beginning. Adjusting to change begins when you experience a loss or an end of something and begin to grieve how things were before the change. For example, you used to visit with your family or friends every Saturday, but now, because of COVID, this looks different. Or perhaps you recently had to give up your driving license. The time when the old is no more, but the new normal is not yet clear, is called the transition or the neutral zone. This is a bit of a limbo period where you may find yourself unsure of how you feel or overwhelmed and unclear of how best to adjust. This is often a time of confusion and you may experience grief, anger, denial, fear, and even acceptance. However, while the transition phase can be uncomfortable, it's also a time when you can explore your options and make choices that will make acceptance of your new reality easier. For example, if you are no longer driving, you might be trying to figure out the best way to get around, investigating your options, while also dealing with that swirl of emotions. Moving through this transition brings you to a new beginning. This final place is where you settle into the new reality that has been brought by the change. In our example, you may have gotten a bus pass and have learned the routes and also have a routine of catching a ride with friends to regular appointments. The length of time it takes to move through this psychological state of change varies depending on the environment in which the change is occurring and how you've coped with change in the past and the nature of the change itself. Human beings have a built inability to adjust to change and hardship. It's called resilience. We all have this in us to varying degrees. Building resilience takes time and practice. 
It isn't about making your problems go away, but rather it's about building skills that can help you to manage stress so that you can cope with the change and enjoy your life. You have already begun on to work on building resilience by watching this video today to learn how you can cope with change and loss brought by dementia. We'll share some strategies in a bit on how you can further strengthen your resilience by exploring ways to manage the challenging emotions that are common on the dementia journey. Generally, we adjust more readily to changes in life that are our choice, that have a net gain, that is, ones where there are more gains than losses, and to changes that are final. Dementia is none of these things. Think about the aspects of your life that have changed as a result of dementia. Were they expected? Did you welcome these changes? Assuming the answer is no to these questions and looking at the list of things that make us adjust more readily to change, what impact does this have on coming to terms with your new situation? Although most people would agree that dementia brings more losses than gains, this doesn't mean that it is unremittingly negative. When we learn more about the disease and find ways of coping, there can be some wonderful moments of grace along the dementia journey. I was talking to a caregiver the other day who told me how his relationship with his mom had actually improved because of dementia. After several years of estrangement, this son decided to support his mom after her diagnosis of dementia. He found that over a few years, he got to know his mom, to enjoy her company, he learned about the past and began to really appreciate his mum for the first time. As dementia progressed, his mum's short-term memory declined and she began to share stories about her life as a young wife and mother. These stories brought both mother and son closer together. So think about what are some of the changes that you have experienced as a result of dementia? Think about relationships. Are they the same as they were before? Is your lifestyle the same? What does living with dementia look like for you? Here are some examples of changes that others have shared with us. We've heard, as mentioned, relationships with other friends or family members are often profoundly changed, some for the better, like the estranged son in the example I've just spoken, and some for the poor, as when friends stop calling because they just don't know what to say. People have shared changes in lifestyle, like those for whom travel was a big part of their lives, but that as dementia progressed, travel became more limited and eventually they were simply not able to enjoy trips together. As dementia progresses for both person living with dementia and caregiver, there are profound changes in conversational abilities and many people have shared their grief over the changes in conversation. Still others have talked about changes in their independence, the lack of freedom to do the things they wanted, how they wanted, and when they wanted. For example, traveling or going out to activities on a whim. All change, both negative and positive, involves loss. This may be a loss of identity, of relationship with the person you're caring for or who is caring for you, or a loss of control or comfort. 
William Bridges proposes four principal aspects of loss. Disengagement is a type of loss we feel with changes to a situation that we're used to and familiar with. For example, moving, a job change, and illness all shake up what our normal life feels like. Disidentific disidentification is what we feel when we are transitioning from what was to what will be. It describes a change in the way we identify ourselves. For example, someone may say, I was a retiree, or I'm a part-time accountant. And that changes to being, now I'm a caregiver. Disenchantment is the realization that you've been torn from your old reality, a reality that you accepted without thought. For example, you may have had an image of what retirement would look like, and now you must accept a new reality that is different from the one you had anticipated. Disorientation is the uncertainty that comes from not knowing what is going to happen. The familiar ways in which you structured your time and your day-to-day -day lives are gone and nothing has come forward to replace them yet. You may feel like a shipwrecked sailor on a desert island, wondering what to do next. Each of these four aspects of loss involve a type of change or transition when you acknowledge the loss and let go of your old reality and of the expectations that will no longer be met so that you can focus on the relationship as it is in any given moment. Transitioning through change takes time. It does not happen overnight. But if we don't try to work through the change, we risk becoming stuck in a past reality that may no longer be possible to maintain. Accepting the new reality and letting go of the old one doesn't mean that you are immune from the pain of the loss, but it can help you to stop fighting with yourself or with the person you're caring for or who is caring for you, resulting in less stress for each of you. When we experience a loss, we experience feelings of grief with it. Because the dementia journey involves a marathon of change, living with dementia in our lives brings constant grief in various forms, whether we're aware of it or not. Grief is universal. It's a normal and necessary human response to any loss, both big and small. You may feel grief when you first hear the diagnosis or when you can no longer remember how to make a recipe you've been making your whole life, or when you see changes in a family member or friend. Even if you feel you're at a place of acceptance, others around you may be in different places in their grief process. As dementia progresses, the loss that accompany the changes accumulate and begin to overflow into other areas. This can express itself in many, sometimes unexpected ways. You may experience physical changes with low energy or feeling weak or worn out. You may have poor sleep patterns, changes in appetite, or experience physical pain or discomfort. Psychological changes can include poor concentration, forgetfulness, or increased impatience. As we've been discussing, grief can be expressed through a variety of emotions. Grief causes some people to withdraw from others or to react in situations differently or in an out of character manner. And finally, some people process grief through spiritual practices like prayer, contemplation, and others.
Dementia often challenges our common understanding of grief as something that occurs after the passing of someone we care about. As people progress through the dementia journey, it's common to experience two specific types of grief. The first, anticipatory grief, is a reaction to losses that have not yet occurred, but that we expect in the future. As an example, feeling sad or expressing denial during discussions of eventually needing to give up driver's license. We know this loss is imminent and that it will become a new reality, and the thought of this can evoke a grief reaction long before the license is actually surrendered. These anticipated losses, grief reactions, and the need for adaptation are merely part of the daily experience of people affected by dementia. Grief within the dementia experience is often disenfranchised, meaning it is not openly acknowledged, socially supported, or publicly shared. There still exists stigma with dementia, and while many people living with dementia and others affected by it work hard to combat the stigma, the secrecy of a dementia diagnosis or a lack of understanding as to what living with dementia means can add to this disenfranchisement, the feeling of being alone in your grief. A caregiver shared with us that I wish someone had told me how alone you can feel how little understanding others have of this disease. This is a good time to mention the value of our First Link Dementia Helpline. This brief session doesn't allow you time or space to discuss and explore your own guilt and grief. If you find that you want to explore your own feelings in greater depth, please feel free to reach out to the First Link Dementia Helpline. I want to quickly acknowledge that depression can coexist with grief and to be aware of when you're having challenges coping. It can be hard to distinguish from grief. Depression is a chemical imbalance in the brain, that is, a chemical change in the brain. Among those living with dementia, symptoms of depression and anxiety can be a direct result of damage that is occurring in the brain or can be side effects of medication. According to the World Health Organization, up to 50% of people living with dementia and 32% of family care partners experience depression at some point along the dementia journey. It's important to diagnose depression in people living with dementia because depression can make the symptoms of dementia worse, like increased forgetfulness, confusion, withdrawal, and anxiety. The good news is that the symptoms of depression respond well to medications and counseling or other mental supports. If you or someone you know is experiencing depression, please speak to your doctor. Have you felt guilty about something in the past week or the past month? Whether you're a person living with dementia or supporting someone who is, you will likely find yourself feeling guilty at some point or another along the way. Guilt and grief are close siblings on the dementia journey and where you find one, you will often find the other. Guilt describes a sense of regret or responsibility that relates to the past. People may feel guilt over things they actually did wrong, things they believe were their fault, or things they had no responsibility for. Perhaps you feel guilty for losing your temper, for wanting time away, or taking time for yourself, or breaking promises you said you would always keep, or for not getting a diagnosis sooner. Guilt is sometimes associated with expectations, 
Have you set high and unrealistic expectations of yourself or of others? Are you feeling guilty because you're not living up to those expectations? Feeling guilty is exhausting. It drains you of the mental and physical energy that you need to cope with the symptoms of dementia or to care for someone who is. So how do you manage it? Before we look at suggestions for managing guilt and grief, I'm going to ask you to think about two questions. How have you coped with difficult situations in the past? And was your method of coping successful? I'll say it again. Think about a time when you had to solve a tough problem or manage a crisis. What got you through that time? That is, how did you cope with that situation? At this point in our lives, we have all had to navigate difficult situations, some more successfully than others. Think about your successes. What are you good at? And how can you take that skill and apply it today? Knowing that you already have a skill set to deal with difficult situations can help you now. You already have a toolbox available to you. And all we're doing today is perhaps adding some new tools or reminding you of some old ones you haven't used in a while. You have the skills within you. Trying to ignore emotions will only make it harder to deal with the change that gave rise to them in the first place. The antidote to coping with feelings of guilt and grief include a rational examination of what exactly have I done wrong and then being more self-compassionate. Feelings of grief in particular often get mistaken for other things. I feel so guilty when I'm out enjoying myself might actually be, I feel so sad that we're no longer able to participate in this enjoyable activity together, rather than an expression of having done something wrong. So what you think is guilt may actually be grief in disguise. To process our losses in a healthy and healing way, we need to understand the grief process. This includes acknowledging and naming the emotions you're experiencing. Are you feeling guilty, angry, jealous, sad, in denial? Give it a name. These are all normal reactions in grief. Even if we don't name the losses in our life, we often have a grief response to them. So much anguish is caused by denial of our feelings or circumstances. This wastes time and energy and usually makes things harder than they need to be. When we allow ourselves to accept what we're feeling, relief and change become possible. Keep in mind that for people living with dementia, the awareness of these losses, the level of awareness of these losses will change as the dementia progresses due to changes in the brain that affect thinking skills. If feelings of grief are repressed rather than responded to, then they will continue to manifest in ways that may create additional challenges such as anger at a family member, frustration with a health care provider, exhaustion, depression, pain, or illness. Naming a loss as grief appropriately can help you cope with some of the changes in behavior in yourself and in the person that you're caring for or who is caring for you. It may also help you break down the barriers that prevent you from keeping taking care of yourself, such as, I don't have time, or help costs money, or no one can do it like I can. It may be that when you look for it, there is time and money, but these strong emotions are preventing your brain's ability to think logically and to find the solutions. 
allow yourself to embrace the loss and feel the grief associated with it. Identify what's causing you to feel guilty. Is it a specific situation you're going through or a thought or a feeling that you're having? Why do you think you feel guilty in that situation or when you have these thoughts and feelings? What are your expectations of yourself, of others? What role might your expectations have in the guilt or grief that you're feeling? For example, if the source of your guilt is concern over making a mistake, then working to increase your skills by learning more about dementia and ways of coping, such as through education like this, might be helpful in reducing this concern and helping you better manage feelings of guilt. Express what you're feeling. Talk about your grief and acknowledge what is the best grieving style for you. Finding ways to express the loss you're feeling helps to connect your head's logical understanding of the loss with your emotional understanding of it. When you're in the moment of experiencing intense emotions, stop what you're doing. Find a quiet space to limit distractions. Take four or five slow, deep breaths and try to clear your mind by counting to 10 or singing your favorite song. As silly as that sounds, deep breathing allows our body to, to physically begin to calm and that can allow us to process emotions. Find helpful ways of processing how you're feeling. Understand that your grieving process is uniquely yours and how you experience grief will depend on your personality, your past experience with loss, the impact of the loss, and the length of time and frequency over which the losses are experienced. Think about what restores you, what helps to fill you up or distracts you from your grief. What type of support do you need? For example, a walk in the park may be restorative, good self-care and a welcome distraction. If during the walk, I stop at one point and remember the many wonderful walks we used to enjoy, then those thoughts are grief work. Share how you feel with others who understand and won't judge you for your feelings. If you know someone else who has gone or is going through a similar experience, try sharing how you're feeling with them. Avoid isolating yourselves. We must physically distance right now, but you can still be social while staying safe. Video call family members or have driveway visits with friends. Find ways to stay socially connected with others in your life. This is especially important now more than ever when you may be feeling that the changes brought by dementia have been amplified by COVID-19. Talk to someone you trust, write in a journal, join an online support group, paint a picture, go for a walk, find a safe and productive way to get those feelings out. The intensity of a feeling usually decreases if it can be expressed. If you are right now asking yourself, what do I do for myself? And you can't think of anything. I encourage you to think of something small that doesn't take additional time out of your day. It can be as simple as adding a few drops of essential oils to the floor of your shower to create an uplifting scent, making a mundane yet necessary task a rejuvenating experience. Or it can be sitting down for a cup of tea while your family member rests 
and leaving the household chores for another day. Remember to be kind to yourself. If you notice negative thoughts running through your mind, give yourself some reassuring words. Something short and simple, such as, I'm having a hard time today. We all have bad days. Can help calm your emotions by offering self-compassion. When you catch yourself having unhealthy or negative thoughts, Consider what you would say to a loved one or a dear friend in that moment. It takes time, but with practice, we can rewire the brain to think and speak more compassionately with ourselves. Remember, the changes that are occurring are not your fault. You are doing the best you can. It takes a lot of courage to travel the long and difficult dementia journey and no one comes into this with all of the answers and with never making mistakes. There will be mistakes. There will be hard days, and you may lose your temper at some point because it is simply all too much. Take a deep breath. If you're able to, go for a walk or simply leave the room and reset. Keep in mind that everyone's situation is different. Try to avoid comparing yourself to the situations of others and be realistic about your limits and what you can and are willing to do. Know that while things will never be the same, you will adjust to the losses. Some strategies that you can use to help cope with the change and uncertainty of the dementia experience include focusing on the things you can do, not on the things that have become too difficult. Experiment with ways to modify activities. If reading has become difficult, try audiobooks. If you're no longer able to attend your exercise class, try doing an exercise video together at home. You may have a good laugh over your attempts at some of the moves. If something seems difficult, take a break. This can be as quick as stepping out onto the balcony for a minute or two for some fresh air. Keeping up with the changes of dementia is a very demanding job. Taking time for yourself will help to restore your physical and mental energy to better cope with the changes. Taking a break also provides you with the emotional distance that's needed to put your feelings into perspective. Keep in mind that changes in the brain can make it difficult for people living with dementia to process change and think it through. Find meaning and purpose in your day. We all need to have a sense of meaning and purpose in our lives. This need is as normal as the need for food and shelter. As what you're able to do changes because of dementia and the current COVID-19 situation, try to find new ways in which you can find meaning and purpose. What are some things you do in your day that give you a sense of meaning and purpose? For example, make time to do activities you enjoy with positive people. When you feel hopeless, talk to someone about how you feel. Often others can shed a brighter perspective on the situation. This is one of the many reasons people join in a support group. Establish a sense of extended community by building a support network. Strengthen the bonds with people who can help see you up, see you through the ups and downs, and with whom you can share your hopes and fears. Staying connected to family, to children and grandchildren especially, can give you perspective. Use inspiring photos posters and quotes. Hang them around your home and carry notes with positive affirmations to bolster hope. There are lots of things you can do to help adjust to your changing abilities. 
for changes in memory, for example, it can be helpful to keep to a routine, have a regular way and time to do things. Some people find it helpful to use a notebook to hold information that's important. Keep it with you at all times. It might contain your address, important phone numbers and names, a list of things to do, appointments, any thoughts or ideas you want to hold on to. And ask for help. For many people, this is much easier said than done. Many feel uncomfortable reaching out and asking for support or help. You may not want to impose, or you may be concerned about how someone else will do the task. Consider, are these reasons logical or rational? Are they appropriate, especially now given the current situation? You may be surprised how many people are happy to help deliver groceries if this is a challenge for you, or ask someone to bring over a meal or two or three and leave it outside for you to ease the demand of preparing food. Some community organizations such as the United Way or local seniors organizations have more formalized supports in place to connect you to others in the community who are willing and able to help. Call 211 to find out what resources are available in your community. I'm going to read a story for you, adapted from American author and activist Emily Pearl Kingsley. We have adapted it to be a metaphor for the unexpectedness of dementia and the forced change in perspective that coping with the disease requires. When you're planning for retirement, it's like planning a fabulous vacation trip to Italy. You buy a bunch of guidebooks and make your wonderful plans. The Colosseum, the Michelangelo David, the gondolas in Venice. You may learn some handy phrases in Italian. It's all very exciting. After months of eager anticipation, the day finally arrives. You pack your bags and off you go. Several hours later, the plane lands. The stewardess comes in and says, Welcome to Holland. Holland, you say? What do you mean, Holland? I signed up for Italy. I'm supposed to be in Italy. All my life I've dreamed of going to Italy. But there's been a change in the flight plan. They've landed in Holland, and there you must stay. The important thing is that they haven't taken you to a horrible, disgusting, filthy place full of pestilence, famine, and disease. It's just a different place. So you must go out and buy new guidebooks, and you must learn a whole new language, and you'll meet a whole new group of people you would never have met. It's just a different place. It's slower paced than Italy less flashy than Italy. But after you've been there for a while and you catch your breath, you look around and you begin to notice that Holland has windmills and Holland has tulips. Holland even has Rembrandts. But everyone you know is busy coming and going from Italy and they're all bragging about what a wonderful time they've had there. And for the rest of your life, you will say, yes, that's where I was supposed to go. That's what I had planned. And the pain of that loss will never, ever, ever go away because the loss of that dream is a very, very significant loss. But if you spend your life mourning the fact that you didn't get to Italy, you may never be free to enjoy the very special, the very lovely things about Holland. Life with dementia will continue to bring changes, even though this can make you feel like there is much that you cannot control. 
it's important to recognize that there is a lot you can do. By learning about dementia and implementing the self-care strategies talked about in this session, you can prepare to manage the changes that will come. Because courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. Here are the numbers for the First Link Dementia Helpline, available Monday to Friday in English from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. at 1-800-936-6033. If you have questions about information you've heard here or any other questions about living with dementia, or are interested in finding out more about our telesupport groups or other online sessions, please don't hesitate to call our First Link Dementia Helpline. 